Hi guys and welcome to the channel. If this is your first time to the channel, we're talking about credit cards, points, finances and travel. If this is something that interests you, please like this video, subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Guys, when it comes to uh, travel credit cards, the most confusing one and the most subjective uh, is really the hotel credit cards. It doesn't really matter what the bonus might be or what the credits might be. If the place you're trying to travel is not served by uh, the hotel chain, uh, it's useless. So it's not only that, it's also a matter of preference. And as we will see, uh, depending on where you travel and when you travel, uh, you might get completely different uh, values. All of the hotel credit cards uh, have uh, no international uh, fees, uh, as to be expected. Uh, two of them uh, that we will see here are from American Express, two are from Chase, and the high annual fee, as you expect, is on the American Express side. That being said, as a general rule, they are all keeper cards. It doesn't matter which one you pick, it will make sense year after year as long as you travel. Even if you stay one or two nights uh, in a hotel a year, it still makes sense to get these credit cards. Uh, I would love to have all of them. Uh, but it's not always uh, feasible. So we will see, we will see. For now, I only have one. Uh, we'll see what happens by the end of the year. But without further ado, let's go to the presentation and see how the numbers look like and what makes sense. Hilton Aspire is a $450 annual fee credit card. Uh, it's a luxury credit card. Another general uh, note here is that you will see on the top of the credit cards, I have the number of hotels uh, each chain has and uh, the point value uh, per chain. So yeah, you might see 150,000 points so uh, with uh, Hilton and you think, oh my God, this is a great offer, uh, which it is, but you can compare it with something like um, the Marriott Bonvoy, the Brilliant, and you will see that uh, for the first year, it makes more sense, even though it's, it looks like it has, has half of the points. Uh, so yeah, it, it really depends. That's why we need to put everything down next to each other so we can make a, a good sense of what's going on and what makes a, a better sense for your use case scenario. Uh, so the Hilton Aspire, 150,000 uh, points right now with 3,000, with 4,000 spent in three months, $250 uh, airline credit, same as the platinum basically uh, 250 dollar resort credit so we see immediately just from those two credits uh, we're getting more than what we pay for the credit card per year and <laughs> this makes it a keeper card immediately a um, hundred dollars property credit but this is for the very expensive Wardorf of astoria and uh, conrad so yeah if you go and you have that kind of money uh, to one of those chains, I don't think $100 makes a difference for you, but it's there. So we need to take it into consideration. Um, you have one anniversary weekend, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, it's one of those days, of course, um, with no limit. There's no limit on where you're staying. This is incredible. This is the only hotel chain that does it, uh, but it also restricts it in the weekend. Um, diamond status, this is the highest uh, that Hilton offers and it's the highest amongst all other credit cards. It might give you a breakfast, a room upgrade and who knows what else. But again, it depends when and where you travel. Typically, internationally, you will get the best offers. Uh, the status is recognized immediately. I just traveled to Costa Rica and um, the world of Hyatt credit card gives you only discovery status. The discovery status is the lowest, basically, of uh, Hyatt. And my status was recognized. I was upgraded to rooms in both cases, uh, both in Andas and in a Hyatt place. I got better view. Uh, I had late checkout. Uh, the value I got from these upgrades basically was giving me more than two cents per point. It was more than three. It was more like three cents per point, and all that with a ninety-five dollar uh, annual fee credit card. Incredible. Uh, but let's go back to the Aspire. Fourteen uh, X on Hilton property, seven X on airlines uh, rentals. Um, that Amex wants you to use seven X on U.S. restaurants. US restaurants, not internationally, and 1x on everything else. 
So basically the value is $750 of this uh, bonus uh, and when we account for all the credits we will see that you know we're gonna get about $900 after paying the annual fee. If we don't take into account the credits, just assign a bonus, it's going to give us $300. So the total value we expect to get the ROI is about uh, 20%. When it comes to uh, Marriott uh, Brilliant, uh, the Brilliant on paper looks like it has less points, uh, 75000 uh, $3,000 spend on three months. It gives $200 on US restaurants and it doesn't mention anywhere that it comes in increments so basically you could go and have a great meal and pay two hundred dollars and you will get it back uh, that's what i make sense of uh, when i read uh, all the terms and conditions it doesn't state anywhere that it's like a 20 percent back or whatever uh, so yeah uh, three hundred dollar marriott credit every year so immediately that 450 annual fee drops to 150 a um, hundred dollars property credit again it's like the Hilton to very expensive properties uh, the Ritz and St. Regis a uh, hundred dollar TSA pre-check or global entry uh, if you don't have that <laughs> um, now that I have the experience of global entry and TSA pre it's 1000% worth it uh, you should go for it um, it has uh, one anniversary night uh, a year uh, up to 50,000 points, so it's about $40, $400 value. So immediately, guys, they're all keeper cards, I told you. Uh, Myriad Gold will give you breakfast, um, late checkout, but uh, the room upgrade, especially in the United States, is very, uh, I doubt it. Uh, priority pass, uh, same as uh, the Platinum. Um, 6x uh, on Marriott properties, 3x uh, on airlines, rentals, uh, 3x on US restaurants, 1x on everything else. After we account for all the credits and the uh, bonus uh, and we subtract the annual fee, we're gonna get $850 on the first year. Uh, if we only count account for the uh, sign-up bonus, we're gonna get $350 and the ROI is 24.6%, which is excellent. And this is due to the lower spending requirement of $3,000 instead of $4,000 on the Aspire. Uh, then we're looking at the world of Hyatt. Uh, right now it says 60,000 or up to 60,000. I'm not gonna get into that marketing uh, trick. It's $30,000 uh, after spending $3,000 in the first three months and 2x on everything else up to 30,000 points. So this is how you get the other 30,000 points. So it doesn't really worth it to spend all that money on this credit card. You could uh, use the Chase Freedom Flex uh, and get 5x on many categories and transfer them to your Hyatt uh, account. So it doesn't make sense. But uh, yeah, if this is the only credit card you're gonna get, it still makes a lot of sense. Uh, one anniversary night up to category four, which is about $200 value. Uh, Discoverist is the lowest um, status you can get with Hyatt. But again, it depends where you are in the world. You're going to get different value out of it. I got 3x because of this status uh, in Costa Rica. 9x on Hyatt properties, 2x on travel, and that is the typical Chase travel that includes everything from parking to, to airline tickets, um, and 1x on everything else. $95 annual fee. You get all this for $95. $550 after we subtract the annual fee. Uh, the ROI is uh, basically 19.4. You have to keep in mind, on the ROI, I'm not accounting for any uh, anniversary night. So keep that in mind. The IHG Premier is the most interesting credit card. Uh, I didn't expect it to be so interesting, honestly. I thought I was debating if I have to put it there, but once I start putting the numbers down, it makes so much sense. Um, 125,000 points after spending $3,000 in three months, one night free when you spend $3,000 on the first three months. 
So it's up to 40,000 points, which is $200 value. So we have to account this night into the sign-up bonus, $100 TSA pre, and that is for an $89 credit card, $89 a year to get the TSA pre alone is more than that. And the night is twice as that, over twice as that. And that doesn't even count the points. Incredible. 25X on IHG properties, 25. Even if we take into consideration that it's only half a cent, it's still almost double that one Hilton offers with a much more expensive credit card. Uh, 2X on gas, 2X on uh, restaurants, 1X on everything else. Uh, so we're gonna get about $625 uh, from the points uh, value plus the 200 of the one night free plus 100 from the TSA pre um, $836 value after paying for uh, the annual fee on a $95, 90, $89 uh, credit card uh, 27% 20, 28 almost percent uh, the ROI return on investment guys is incredible on this credit card I this is something I didn't see coming but this is when we account for sign up bonuses we all know that it's not the best thing to keep rotating credit cards like that and uh, turning them in uh, because once you start doing the car turning thing you, your credit score will drop if you want to buy a house or whatever it's not the best thing to do on the second year obviously we don't have the sign up bonus we're gonna apply a budget and to be fair I applied this same uh, budget to one credit card at a time. So $12,000 total, I applied to each credit card at the time, and I equally divided the number between the categories that they offer. So for example, the Aspire has four categories, uh, and so I have $3,000 on each category, and the World of Hyatt has three categories, so I applied $4,000 on each category, just to try to make it simple and straightforward, because there's really no way to make this fair. Everybody has different spending habits, so they're gonna use the credit cards different, so I'm just trying to do my best here to be subjective. We still have most of the credits here at uh, the Hilton Aspire, which that alone helps us pay for the credit card, by the credit card itself. Uh, we're gonna get back after spending this money about 87,000 points we're gonna get with the credits after subtracting the annual fee $585 back the ROI looks very low on uh, on this sheet here but in all actuality um, this is because we account for $12,000 uh, the $12,000 though is not to get anything is is if this is your credit card and you're spending it You're spending money to live like to buy groceries or do whatever. So uh, the ROI It gives you an idea of where you stand with these credit cards, but at the same time it's not everything So don't don't uh, get a credit card based on the ROI alone uh, The maximum total value you can get it's uh, $585 on the Aspire on Marriott uh, Brilliant, uh, you can get um, $262, and now you see a big difference here. It's less than half uh, than the Hilton. And but, but look what happens on the second year with the World of Hyatt credit card. The 48,000 points that you can potentially get with this credit card <laughs> worth $865 after subtracting the annual fee. $865, this is the highest from all these credit cards. And this is the main reason why I got this credit card before anything else. Because when I got this credit card, it was 60,000 points uh, for $6,000. So it was a much better deal. Uh, so yeah, the World of Hyatt long-term is the credit card you really want. Now, again, that's based on the numbers because you might go to a place that doesn't have Hyatt and it has Hilton or it has Marriott. So yeah, don't, don't, <laughs> this is for my use case scenario. Um, the IHG is still excellent credit card, $471 uh, 
after paying off the annual fee. Um, 3.9 uh, ROI. Guys, this credit card has the potential to be the best. Why? Because it has the fourth night free when you book with points. So you can book with points, get three nights, well, four nights, you will pay for three. So you get one night there, you get the anniversary night, and basically you can get amazing values over a thousand dollars with this credit card if you play the game right. So it has the potential to be the best credit card out of all of them, which is crazy. I didn't expect that to happen and it's the cheapest credit card to get. So yeah, if IHG is something that you're interested in or wherever you travel is something that uh, they have properties, you should take a second look at this credit card. Guys, I was really debating on if I have to uh, give a ranking on all these credit cards and I decided against it because really it's so subjective that it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. In my case, I would say that Hyatt makes the most case, but this is my case. Wherever I travel, I travel typically to main cities or main areas that, you know, Hyatt has properties. But look at IHG, like you can get so much value uh, that I am very intrigued. Like if I wasn't under 524, there's a very good chance that after this numbers, uh, I would probably get this credit card because they're everywhere. Uh, if you think about it, they have almost 6,000 uh, properties. Uh, so try to make the decision based on your uh, use case scenario and uh, what you really like and what you think you're actually going to use. Because if you don't take planes like at least once a year, why would you need a priority pass, for example, or the uh, airline incidentals credit? So. It really depends. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Which one is your favorite? Which one do you have? And what do you think about the numbers? I was very surprised actually. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, ciao.